This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts, Luke Sylvia and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball. Five fans, four fans. Go Magic! What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Sixth Man Show. Today is December 5th, 2022. Off of the injury report, back in action from the gallbladder, Luke Sylvia. What's up, brother? I'm here, baby. I'm 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 sore. And if we had to record yesterday, I wouldn't have been able to do it. But a night of sleep, honestly, I wake up and I'm like, man, I feel ten times better than I did the day before. Um, I'm just glad that this happened when I was younger. You know, you hear like seventy year olds get their gallbladder taken out and it takes them forever to recover. I'm I'm just, you know, I'm thankful to be off the uh, IR this uh this soon. Yeah, my wife had her gallbladder out uh about 2 years ago, a little mm-hmm. over 2 years ago, and I told Luke, I was like, "Man, I was like, your the recovery is going to be rough." He's like, "Yeah, I, I think I'll be okay." And then yeah, he proceeded to miss the next uh, week of podcast. So glad <laughs> to have you back, man. Uh, Kevin did a great job, you know, standing in for you, always comes through in the clutch. We have a super exciting episode for you all today. The, the games th- of this past week were not fun to watch. Uh, you know, the Magic have now uh, lost, what is it, eight in a row, I think yeah. we're looking at now. Yeah. Uh, the results have not been great. So we don't want to dwell too much on the individual games. The Magic just really have not been playing well. They haven't been playing with a lot of effort, a lot of intensity and, and focus. And everyone has noticed that. I don't think we need to sit here and talk about that for 40 minutes. So we're not going to do that. What we are going to do is we had our basically quarter poll check-in with Jeff Turner. So he joined us uh, before the season started, and he said, hey, like I'm, I'm happy to come on at any time. Let's check in like throughout the season. So uh, Jeff is going to check in with us like every 20, 21 games or so as we continue to go through the season. So we had a pretty long conversation with him. It was a lot of fun. A lot of great insight. You know, he's been around a long time, you know, ba- literally since the start of the Orlando Magic, and he has seen the team, uh, you know, a- in every phase. So, um, always good to talk with him. I hope you guys uh, really, really enjoy that. Uh, we are going to talk some Orlando Magic basketball before we get into the interview with Jeff Turner. But before we do that, if you have missed the first two watch parties of the year, both of the watch parties were incredible, a lot of fun, great turnouts. We have our next watch party coming up on December 16th. It is a Friday. That's going to be when the Magic take on the Boston Celtics. We're going to be at Cavo's Bar and Kitchen, which is 900 East Washington Street in Orlando. That game, that tip-off is set for 7.30, so the watch party is going to start at 7 o'clock. Luke, I think, isn't Cavo's where you went, the pre-draft tour that we did with the Magic? Yeah, I believe so. How was the food there? I remember you telling me the food there was pretty nice. That's what I'm yeah. looking forward to the most. Yeah, yeah. Food was good. Um, I my memory is terrible. I don't remember what I got, but I don't. I I would have remembered if I left, and I was like, man, that food sucked. I didn't have that experience. Um, it was good. the The layout is cool. Um, bar is, is kind of like in the middle, and then they've got you know seating all around it, pretty much. Um, and they've got TVs all over, obviously on the, you know, on, on top where the bar is. So yeah, it's a, it's a good setup. It's a fun setup. Um, I hope that, you know, regardless of team record come to that point, Jonathan, that you guys will come out and watch if nothing else, just to hang out. I mean, we had a great time hanging out with all of you guys at the last one against the bulls. It just happened to be, you know, a sweetener got through thrown into it that Jalen hit that shot to win the game. But uh, it, it was a fun time nonetheless, and uh, it's just always good to be around Magic fans. Uh, you know, we're, if you're tired of being the, the lone Magic fan in your friend group, feel free, come out there. Everybody's very friendly. Uh, I'm sure that you could strike friendships with a lot of these people at this watch party, and uh, it'll, it'll be a good time. I promise you that. If you're in town and you don't come out, you're just a casual. Like let's let's call it what casual. it is. Casual. Mm-hmm. Some some folks. I said that about our last watch party. That if you weren't there, you're a casual. And they're like, well, what if I live in like Australia? Like obviously, you're not a casual. Like if you live in like uh, our buddies from Court Cousins, we're like, man, I hope we're not casuals. It's like you guys live in Connecticut. Obviously, we're not talking about you, right? Like 
we're talking about the folks that like, oh man, you know, Cabo is only a 10 minute drive, but oh man, those reports that I had to file this week were really, really rough. And I just want to <laughs> sit in my rear end here on the couch with my, with my, you know, my Michelob Ultra. Those are the casuals. Like if, if you have it in you and you are capable of getting to these watch parties and you don't come, you're just dead to us. Like quite, Speak, quite frankly, of, it is what it is. Speaking of Michelob Ultra, they had some sick magic bucket hats at the last watch party. So, and I got it for free. I literally scanned a QR code on my phone, uh, signed something. I don't know. I could have like given my rights away as a person. I have no idea, but I got a magic bucket hat. Nick Anderson was there wearing his magic bucket hat that he got for free. I mean, who knows? I don't know. Maybe, maybe another guy, you know, magic legend like Nick Anderson will, will come to that watch party as well. We have no idea. But it'd be uh, pretty cool. I'm pretty sure the Magic gave you that bucket hat. But Michelob Ultra, they always have specials. I'm sure they're going to have special this specials at oh, this really? one. And Michelob Ultra also is rolling out like more Orlando Magic edition like cans this season. I saw, forget who it oh, was. I, I think picture. it was probably it's probably Maddie World Peace. We know yeah, our boy Maddie loves Maddie the Michelob sure. Ultras. I think I saw him tweet about that. So yeah, uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll be able to get some of those at the watch party. We'll see. Before we get into the interview with with JT, with Jeff Turner, we want to go through the weekly state of the Magic. The Magic went 0-3 this week, bringing them to a record of 5-19. They have the worst record, Luke, in the NBA. They have an offensive rating of 109.1, which ranks 27th in the league. They have a defensive rating of 115.8, which ranks 27th in the league. Their overall net rating is negative 6.7, which 27 and 27 is good for... 27th in the league, their net rating. On the injury front, Jonathan Isaac remains out. Uh, Mo Bamba, he, is, he was also out uh, this entire week dealing with the back spasms. He's questionable for Monday, so we'll see what happens on that front. Chuma OKK, uh, he's been out with the, the left knee soreness. I believe he's ruled out for Monday as well. Wendell Carter Jr. with the pl- uh, plantar fascia issue that he's dealing with. And then Jalen Suggs with the ankle and then Gary Harris, he's also out with the hamstring. So we got a couple of guys back. We lost a few more guys. It would be really nice to, to get some of these guys back. And last but not least, uh, before we get into the interview with Jeff Turner, we want to give a special shout out to the folks that help every make help make every episode possible. I don't know why that was such a tongue twister. <laughs> I'm referring to our patrons. You guys can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show we have three tiers of benefits starting at just two dollars a month where you can just help support the show Um, but then we have additional tiers where you can have other benefits like getting access to our discord channel and then we also have a monthly zoom call for our hall of fame tier patrons we actually have one of those coming up uh this wednesday so we're looking or this thursday i should say goodness gracious i don't know what's going off my brain sometimes but we're really looking forward to that uh, we just jump on a Zoom call with our Hall of Fame tier patrons, and we just talk about the Orlando Magic. It's a it's a great way to meet other Orlando Magic fans, much like the Discord channel that we have. Um, but I feel like this is probably going to be a pretty heavy event session, if I had to guess, yeah. Luke. So again, if you guys are interested in joining our Patreon, you can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. And I want to give a special shout out to all of our Hall of Fame tier patrons, starting with Court Cousins, Armin, Carson Tulo, Jonathan Borges, Normal. Magic Player History, Julio, Bailey, Gabe Gaines, Wiffle, Michael Martin, Jamel Miller, Michael Salapong, Franz Goated Fasho, The Distract, Mo Bamba, Yo Mama. It's not Okiki to say okay, K. I am getting better at that. Thank you very much. I'm I'm really giving it my best effort. Pierre A, Migzors, Dylan Holden, Mr. Mikey, Eduardo Sanchez, Drum, Danimal, Dotto 15, Bobby Skinner, Goaty93, Teddy Sylvia, Eric Lopez, Fuchsia, Juan Geraldo, Bill Fulton, Edmund Ligon, Jose Esquilin, Destin for Greatness, Caleb Pete, Cannibalism, Time Mr. TV, Chad 3045, Joe Rothfuss, ESPN Really Sucks, Gear 95 Shred, Junior Bruce, Half Recon, Shaheen 177. Again, a special shout out to all of our Hall of Fame tier patrons and all of our patrons. You can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. Without further ado, let's throw it to our interview or our conversation rather with Jeff Turner. All right, Orlando Magic fans, we have a very special guest on this episode. He joined us in the preseason 
And we talked about checking in every, you know, 20 games or so. So we're doing our first quarter of the season recap uh, with Mr. Jeff Turner. Jeff, how are you doing, sir? Thanks for joining the show again. I am I am doing well uh, to uh, steal a line from you. I'm doing well personally. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> professionally, I'd um, I'd like to see a few more wins on the Magic side. But, uh, you know, we, we, we take the good and the bad and we just deliver the broadcast. I really feel for you and, and, and David, especially in some of the games that we've seen recently where there's there's not really a whole lot that you guys can continue to expand upon about the game and the result on the floor. So you're just having to kind of bring up random conversations. Is, is that you guys just kind of freestyling? Like, are you just <laughs> winging it at that point? Or do you have conversations all the time? Like, hey, if, if this next game isn't going so well, this is something that we can talk about. What does that look like for you and uh, Mr. Steele? Um, a lot of, you know, I, I, I think the, you know, I think I shared with this the last time I, I was on with you guys, but um, David and I spent a lot of time together. Like we're, you know, we're, uh, when we're on the road, you know, David and I are having coffee, we're having lunch, um, you know, we're, we're just together and, um, and we're great friends. Um, and, you know, even when the games are bad, I, you know, I think, and I hope that what people see is just two, two guys that, you know, really like each other, uh, good friends, just talking, whatever, you know, um, you know, some things like, uh, you know, we, we try, you know, the, the, is this anything is David's, uh, you know, just to, you know, when we were not doing so well, kind of just to give us something else to talk about. Um, and then different things come up at different times that, you know, like, uh, last Wednesday, um, uh, uh, or the Hawks game, um, uh, here, you know, David, uh, just randomly asked me, um, um about uh, we were looking at the road ahead about a raptor being a bird or a bird is a raptor or something like that and we got into this discussion about well and you know and i said no a raptor is a dinosaur and you know then we got into discussion and um and then some things are you know we kind of planned if uh, people were tuned into the toronto game if they were still watching in the second half um, I, we had a little segment, our Taco Bell take, and I tried to play off of that. Didn't go as well because the timing wasn't good, but I tried to play off of it. Uh, David and I's conversation about the Raptor and, you know, surprise him with my, my favorite Raptors of all time. And, you know, hoping he would say, Oh, Vince Carter, you know, Chris Bosch. And it was the red tail Hawk and the Osprey and the bald <laughs> Eagle, you know? So, um, a lot of things, you know, we just, it's, I think sometimes I don't know if the, uh, if our, our viewers, our fans get it, but David and I keep each other laughing. So, you know, that's where we have to go, especially to your point, um, you know, towards the end of a game where you've just kind of been outplayed and, um, you know, there's, there's really not a lot to talk about. It's just, you know, kind of winding down the fourth quarter and, and hoping it's over sooner than later. Yeah, uh, Jeff, you said, you know, you the Magic had been outplayed. One of my yeah. my favorite terms that I've used recently is that the Magic get out talented, you know, and yeah. uh, and, and and so that that's something that I always bring up is just because you have a young roster, yeah. the, the talent level, just, you know, some of these teams like the Raptors, um, these really good teams that the Magic have really run into here on this losing stretch. Um, it, it is unfortunate, but sometimes you get out talented. Um, I, I wanted to also bring up <laughs> Jeff. So uh, Kobe Price had tweeted out a, a, a nugget last night. Sometimes I like nuggets. Sometimes I don't. I don't like this one. <laughs> this one is at the Magic last night, Mark, the sixth time the Magic trailed by at least 20 points in the second half. Um, and five of those six have come during this eight game losing streak, yeah. um, including three consecutive games that we're in right now. What do you think is, is kind of gone awry for the Magic in that stretch? Um, and, and what would you say, I guess, the maybe the more leaders of this Magic roster you know, need to do in order to, to right the ship? Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, so I think that's been the most discouraging thing through this uh, eight-game road trip is that you know, we, we have had the, uh, the games where we get down so far. And I, I think it's, 
you know, it's, it's a lot of things, you know, you, you, there, there's really no way, you know, you're NBA, you're a professional basketball player. There's really no excuses um, that you can make, but there are circumstances. And so, um, you know, at, one of the things that the magic are dealing with obviously is injuries. Um, you know, at, to me, if you, if you go back and you look at the last 10 games, right? So we're, I think, what, one and nine uh, over that stretch, the win coming in Chicago. Um, of those 10 games, the only one Wendell Carter Jr. played in was that Chicago game, right? So as I don't think right now um, defensively we're struggling a little bit. We're, we're, we're struggling on the boards, um, we're struggling to score in the paint. And if you think about those things together, um, you know, you look at what Wendell brings to the game, you're really missing him. You couple that with the fact that Wendell goes out, Mobamba's out, and now we're working, we're, we're starting to get healthy a little bit, right? We get our two guards back, um, and, and two guards that we need uh, in Cole Anthony and Markel Fultz. Uh, we get Mo Wagner back. Um, so now it becomes, all right, well, so we've added these guys back. We're missing. So, again, it, Jamal Mosley can't seem to get a healthy roster where you can get some continuity with your lineup. And I think um, where the really the, the effort game to me was that uh, second Philadelphia game where we just, you know, we just – when I say outplayed, you know, your word out talented is probably better. Um, we were outplayed in that Philly game. I mean, we just, there are not many times, um, if you go back over the last, you know, last year and this year where you just feel like the magic let go of the rope, right? Like they fought, they tugged, right? But in that game, it kind of felt like it just kind of got away from us. So um, those are issues. And the talent part of it, you're absolutely right. I mean, you think about, I mean, if we start looking back just over the uh, last four, let's say the last four, you know, you go up to Brooklyn and you get, you know, you, you played well, you're in the game, you're battling, and you get a, what, 45-point effort from, you know, Kevin Durant that, like, I mean, how do you, overcome that um you go you go to cleveland and donovan mitchell you know drops a, a huge game on you last night it was og ananobi just came out was on fire so um I, you know right now we're just not getting a match for that paolo's not you know uh i don't think he's fully back yet uh franz is you know still waiting the good things though looking forward and if i'm you know, getting ahead of myself on your questions. I said this last night on the broadcast. The one thing is like, I watch Markel, right? And Markel wants to go. Like he gets the ball, he wants to go. But we've been playing without him, without Cole for most of the season. And what you see now is Paolo is still hesitating, coming back to, to the inbound. And so is Franz, instead of just getting out and going, right? Instead of running the floor, knowing that Markel's going to get me the ball if I run. Um, so I think that becomes a process of these guys have to play together, right? They've got to have time on the floor. So they begin to see, you know what? I, it's not my responsibility necessarily to, you know, stay back and make sure the ball comes in. Markel's going to take care of that. I got to get up the floor because if I run, he's going to get me the ball and the pace of play um, will improve. So that's kind of a long answer to your question. Luke. But, you know, I just there are circumstances, right, where things are just not coming together as quick as uh, as we'd like to see. And there are circumstances that are really out of the control of the coaching staff uh, when you start you know, putting all this together. Yeah, to your point, Jeff, uh, obviously, like this team hasn't been playing with, with the amount of pace than, that we perhaps anticipated last year. Magic were top 10 in terms of pace in the entire NBA. And I think partly in due to the fact that we've had so many injuries and you've had to rely so much on Paolo and so much you know, on Franz. And a lot of that is just boiled down to those guys you know, playing ISO and, and making a play for themselves and getting to the rim it's really slowed down the the pace of this team. And, and to your other point about, you know, needing to play with Markel, 
Obviously, Paolo's never played with Markel. Right. Even when Markel came back last year, he was mostly playing with the bench unit. Didn't really right. spend a lot of time playing with Franz last year. So I do think that's a, a great point that you make, that those three guys especially who um, are really going to make that starting unit like a, a really cohesive offensive you know machine at some point this season at least we hope but it's going to take time just want to to give our, our listeners a little bit of, of perspective so right now the magic are five and 19 uh through the first uh what is that 24 games of the season last year the magic didn't get their sixth win until the 31st game of the season so they uh won um, they beat the Brooklyn Nets in Brooklyn. If you remember, kind of every the almost the whole team went out with COVID at that point. It it seemed like <laughs> except for Franz Wagner, and you're able to beat the Brooklyn Nets, uh, and that made the Magic six and twenty five. So, comparatively to last season, things aren't quite as bad, you know, as they were then. Uh, but Jeff, it's been a few months since we talked to you. I just wanted to talk to you about. Um, where are the Magic right now in terms of where you expected them to be uh, before we started the season? Because I feel like we all felt pretty you know, positive and felt pretty good that this team was going to be better than we were last year. And because of a lot of the circumstances you mentioned, we haven't been. But where were your expectations again uh, before the season started? Well, much higher. You know, I, I think, you know, uh, before the season, I was, you know, pretty excited. Um, you know, again, as I when you when you look at this team on paper um and you know and and I'm around them and I see them in the gym um and you see all of the things that we talked about like we you know if you've got everybody he- uh, uh, healthy um you you should have positional versatility right you should be able to play um you know a lot of different lineups uh, a different way of playing um, you know, w- because of the injuries, we've gotten to see the big lineup, right? I, I'm not one that thinks that's a necessarily a lot of, uh, you know, a, 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 a lineup you use the majority of the game. Um, but I think it's effective at times, right? Uh, much like Golden State used their death lineup. It wasn't, you know, they didn't use it the entire game. They, you know, didn't use it in key portions. Um, where they were able to get out and switch um, and do some other things. So, yeah, I, 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 with looking at the roster at the beginning, assuming everybody was going to be healthy, we knew Markel would be, you know, we didn't realize it would be as long. We thought it was a couple of weeks. Um, you know, Jalen went down, Cole went down early, and all of a sudden we're playing with no guards. Um, so, you know, I know Jamal, um, Mosley likes to say, you know, well, this provides opportunity for other guys, and it does. Just it shouldn't be as long as it's been, right? Like as many minutes. Like there's nothing wrong with Franz Wagner running the point. Um, in fact, he's done an admirable job considering he's never been a point guard. There's nothing wrong with running isolations for Paolo Bancaro. He's good at it. But if it's all you got and it's a steady diet of that, the NBA is a league that teams will scout and they will come up with different plans. Um, and so to your point, what's happened is it has really bogged us down. Um, you know, I looked at numbers, you know, like when Markel was healthy last year, you look at those 18 games and our pace went with Markel on the floor, went up four four extra possessions. I mean, you know, in the NBA, that's huge. Um, and so, you know, without him, without Cole for so long, uh, and Jalen being out of, in and out of the lineup, we just do we just don't get a lot of easy buckets. Everything is hard right now. So um, I think you know, just in short conversations with you know Franz or Terrence Ross or you know any of those guys who um, who've been around and kind of know what Markel brings, um, I think they're excited to play with him, understanding that they're going to get easier looks um, when he's on the floor. So, Jeff, we had Terrence Ross on the podcast not too long ago, and Terrence talked, you know, just about, you know, last season basically alluding to the fact that it got really tough. 
Um, and we talked about Terrence at the beginning of this season, talking about him as being a rejuvenated Terrence Ross, right? Um, he had a great game against Toronto, but last year we could tell body language wise, uh, maybe effort wise, that someone like Terrence Ross might not have been all there um, and just been ready for the next thing. And Terrence is a guy easily excited by the players around him. Paolo comes back, or we get Paolo in general. Terrence Ross is at play at the beginning of the season is elevated. Markel yeah. Fultz comes back, and on his stream, when he's streaming video games, he said, oh, Markel's coming back. He said, I'm going to definitely be playing if he plays tomorrow. Um, and he had you know that illness, his sickness, right? But just yeah. to show you, players get players excited on you know as teammates. But I will say, and kind of shedding light on Paolo recently, last night, right? His lowest point total of the season with nine fronds, the same thing. But at times, uh, and you don't have to necessarily comment on it, but Paolo <laughs> just seemed to be a little bit sleepwalking. Um, mm-hmm. What can you say, like maybe from your career, um, things that I guess get the team extra motivated to to play basketball games. This is a long season. Yeah. And it's a long time for, you know, even Jonathan and I record twice a week to sit up to get on the microphones twice a week <laughs> and be like, uh, what are we going to talk about? You know, we're yeah, losing games. Yeah. And I'm sure to even a huge, you know, a bigger extent, players experience this yeah. on a night to night basis. Can I guess just kind of shed light on that and, and what it takes to get that extra fire motivation and game random game 26, 25 of the season? Yeah, it's um, it's a great point. I mean, you know, the, the, our first unit, other than Bowl, uh, wasn't very good. Uh, wasn't very good last time in Toronto, and you know, a, a lot of that can be attributed to Toronto. I mean, they came out. You know, I, I read this morning they had a players only meeting, and you know, they were they wanted to. Uh, I think uh, Thaddeus Young's quote was, "We gotta we gotta punch them first. Uh, they did. And they came out <laughs> and. Um, and they did, yes. And so the, I think from a Paolo standpoint, yeah, it, you know, it is a long season. But if you think about it, there, there haven't been any very many duds, right, in his young season. He's just 20 years old. Um, you know, I marvel we just keep putting together lists that he's on, right? And then have all these great players that first to do this, the only, you know, rookies to do these things. Um, every now and then you're going to have one. I mean, that's just the nature of the game. You're just not going to play well. Um, and you couple that, you know, I, I would assume he's frustrated a little bit. I hope he is with the losing. I mean, um, it's not something he's done. Um, and I think, you know, what will be interesting is the bounce back, right? Is like, how does he bounce back? Uh, because it, it does not going to get any easier this week, you know. I mean, we're, we're we're taking on, you know, we got Milwaukee, the Clippers, and then back to back with Toronto again. Um, so, how does he bounce back? Does he take that as like, you know, that's not me? Do I move on? Um, and that's all part of it. Um, you know, it's it's a grind, right? And when you're young, you know, they always talk about rookie walls and and things like that. You have to learn how to do this, right? Like that, I mean, the good thing people always say um, in the NBA, you get blown out one night. Well, the good thing is you've either got a game the next night or two nights later, right? And you just move on. You have to. Um, You can't dwell on it. It's not like in college where, you know, every game is, uh, you know, of the magnitude, you know, from a publicity, you know, from a media standpoint, you know, there are some that just, uh, you know, kind of go under the radar, but as a professional, you know, how do you bounce back from a poor game? So I think we'll learn a lot, um, this week about Paolo, um, and, and how he bounces back. So we're learning more about Paolo, but we're also learning more about just like this young roster as a whole, you know, Franz Wagner, Cole Anthony, although, you know, not playing right now, but Wendell and, and Jalen Suggs. Jeff, we're going all the way back to the 89-90 season, right? The Uh-oh. first year of the Orlando Magic. Your first, yes. you know, uh, you were here since the very beginning. And you went, you know, you experienced a team that went through some growing pains, you know, and struggled over the course of a couple of years. And then you all were able to get the first overall pick, you know, with Sha- Shaquille O'Neal um, in 1992. And then 
obviously the team like basically overnight, you know, improves a ton with Shaq. You barely miss the playoffs. You end up getting the number one overall pick again, traded for Penny Hardaway. What, what did you see that maybe that first year with Shaq, like, was it just all Shaq or were it other young guys on the team kind of learning to win along the way? And, and what allowed that team to kind of flip the switch moving forward? Um, well, you know, that that's, gosh, man, you guys are, you guys are on it tonight. Um, yeah, you know, the thing that about that is, let, you know, like Shaq was like, you know, one of those generational players though, right? Like, you know, if you, if you start, you know, I, I went through this exercise a while back and start thinking about the number one picks over the, since 2000, even right. Like, how many came in, like think of all the great players came in and like changed the franchise that year, their rookie year. Like we made a, like, you know, we won, I think 21 more games than the year before uh, with Shaq. Right. I, I, there are not too many, right. Dwight didn't do that. Right. Like you think about some of the guys like Anthony Davis or, you know, just uh, some of the guys, you probably have to go back to LeBron, right. In Oh three for a guy, Maybe that did that. Um, so, you know, it's hard to compare it to Shaq. What I will say is, um, you know, the team um, the, from 89 when we started, right? So we had we had a collection of, uh, let's say, veteran players, you know, guys that had been around. Um, <laughs> I, I love the out talented where, you know, we, we probably weren't as talented as a lot of teams in the league, but we were a good group to surround Nick Anderson. Right. Um, we were good. Pitch. The next year we bring in Dennis Scott. We we're probably a good group for Dennis to grow with. I mean, we had guys that, you know, those two guys didn't have to be the guy every night. Um, because we had a Scott Skiles, because we had a Terry Couch, guys that could put up numbers, Reggie Theus. Um, and as we, you know, kind of building uh, along those lines in year four, we get, you know, Shaq. Um, now he's got a budding, you know, young Nick Anderson and uh, and Dennis Scott beside him, you know, that, that help a little bit. Obviously, Skiles was still there. Um, and so... You know, those kind of things, I, I think, help um, this ma- – our current Magic team is just young, right? And so it really puts that part, that leadership part of it and everything really falls on our coaching staff, right? Like they've got to be the motivators. They've got to be um, the guys, Um Maybe that's – you know, it's not a bad thing uh, or a good thing either way, but um, it just puts that pressure on them to be the guy to keep them together uh, rather than, say, a lot of, you know, guys that have been in the league uh, to help out, you know, with that from the motivation standpoint. And what have you seen from Jamal Mosley uh, to that, you know, to that point? That, that To me, that is Jamal's um, – you know, that's his superpower, right? That's, that's what he does. Um, he is the, um, he is the most positive coach I think I've ever seen. I, you know, if you, it, you, what you really need to do you see, it's easy for me because he's right in front of me every game. Right. But like, if you, if you had the ability, like at a game, just watch him. And I mean, they're, you know, most coaches are, you know, they'll get angry or whatever, or they'll move up and down, they'll clap their hands. Jamal lives every play. He's into it. Um, and the guys feed off that, you know, that at some point they've got to generate that emotion themselves or they're going to, they'll, they'll kill their coach. Probably he'll just drop, uh, drop dead of a heart attack um, because he puts so much, he invests so much into the game. Um, so that part, that motivation, that leadership, that, you know, that, um, always teaching, uh, pulling them aside, telling them what they did wrong and things like that, all that is, um, that's his strength. And it's why I think he is the perfect coach for this young group. You know, if you're, you know, the decision was made not really to surround this group with a lot of veteran players. Um, so you've got to have a, um, that coach that, you know, brings that, you know, fatherly kind of motivational 
um, thing in. And I think Jamal's perfect for that. I want to talk about Jeff, you know, as far as this team goes right now, it is, it, it feels dark for magic fans to say the least. You, you don't have a good record as we've obviously touched on here, but at the same time, and, and Jonathan asked about, you know, your expectations prior to the season at this point, if you are a coach in the front office, whatever it might be, are you prioritizing development right now with a five and 19 record? Or are you saying, let's go out there and priority number one is we're going to win some games. Um, I, I, I think, you know, like right now, I think it's like, you, it's, it's hard because it's almost, it's incomplete. I, you know, it's, here's the thing I always say is like, I don't know. Um, I don't know what the front office, what their mindset is, but I've been in sports, uh, in basketball my whole life. And I've really never met a player or a coach who wants to do anything but win, right? Like, are you trying to develop? Yeah, yeah, you are. You're trying to, you know, work, you know, you can see the difference in the changes in lineups and looking and everything. That's not necessarily um, him just coaches developing. They're looking for a lineup that wins. They're trying to put together a group that can win some games. Um, So, you know, I used to laugh, uh, you know, the, when I was coaching high school basketball and I, you know, people would come up, you know, and, and, uh, you know, say, well, why didn't you play this kid? Or, you know, why, you know, why did you take this person out and everything? And I, I'm just like, cause, cause I want to win, you know, that's, I'm a coach. That's what we do. You know, um, well, you don't like my kid. It doesn't matter, uh, whether I like him or not. I'm a coach. If he can help me win, then he's going to be on the floor. You know, it's kind of one of those deals. So that's why I say I've never met, if you're in the battle, uh, you know, on the floor, if you're not there, if you're not trying to win, then you're in the wrong business. Um, so, uh, you know, front office, you know, when we hear the, you know, whatever it is, tanking or whatever that is, are there tricks they can use? Um, yeah, sure, certainly, you know, to if they want to go that direction. Um, but from a coaching standpoint and, you know, just getting to know Jamal and his coaching staff and seeing them after games, um, they, they want to win. You know, they're, it's, uh, they're being judged just like the players are, you know, um, on wins and losses. Um, but at the same time, you can do both. You know, you can still develop uh, and, you know, and try to win as well. You got it. The, the, the reality is, and you pointed out magic fans, if it's looking dark, well, it's, you know, like I said, we're not meeting our expectations, right? When we started the season, we were, we were like, we got the number one pick. We got Franz Wagner. We got, you know, Markel's coming back. We're getting healthy. Da da da. It hasn't played out. It's an incomplete um, that we're getting. It's not a letter grade. It's a, it's an incomplete, and, you know, so those, it, it does seem dark, but, you know, we're, we're seeing some things. We're seeing some positives. Who would have thought at the beginning of the season that, you know, we had no idea. We found something in bowl bowl, like my goodness, like, you know, we didn't even know what we had. And now we're talking about, yeah, when this guy comes back now, you know, what do we do with bowl bowl? Is he like our sixth man? Is it, you know, I mean, it's, We've got this giant, I'm telling you what, the other night in Toronto, the oohs and ahs in the crowd in a very partisan, you know, this rat raptor crowd. They love, <laughs> they love them some raptors now up in Toronto. But man, every time Bo Ball put his hands on that, they were all on the edge of their seat wondering what, you know, he was going to do next. And they were out of their seats when he went coast to coast and dunked that one. Uh, over the top. I can't remember who it was. Now it must the whole team probably. Um, <laughs> so you know, there's there's a development there, right? We're we're developing this young guy that hadn't had a really an opportunity anywhere else. So do they want to win? Yes. Uh, do they want to keep developing because it's such a young team? Yes. The problem is it's hard to win with a young team. It really is. There's not a lot 
of uh, history on young teams having a lot of success in our league. To your point about Bull Bull, um, we talked before we started recording. I was at my wife's Christmas party last night in the middle of the living room with on the big screen, the Magic losing by 30. And everybody that walked by, they were like, wait a minute, who is this guy? Like, who, <laughs> who is this guy that I've never seen anybody that looks like that human being before? And uh, of course, it's Bull Bull. Jeff, one thing that I wanted to ask you, I know it's it's been really kind of doom and gloom, and I do want to talk about some of the positives that we've seen this season, but you're much closer to the team and, and to the players than you know we are any of the other fans. Just from um just like the 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 mood and the energy around the team, like kind of off the floor with all with throughout all of the losing recently, what is what has that been like? What have you seen from the guys? Yeah, they're they remain positive. Right. Like they, you know, they're young and they feel like they're they're right there. Right. Like they're, um, you know, Jamal Mosley's thing is during this streak is we just got to get we got to get the one. Right. Just get one. You know, you build from that. We, we need we need a victory. We need one. And then we go from there. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of been it. They are they are a very resilient bunch. Right. Like it's, you know, yeah. You know, I'm 60 years old and I sit there and do the broadcast and we're down 30, Jonathan, and it's, man, it's hard. And it's like, man, what am I going to say now? You know, and, you know, I, you know, live and die with every win and loss. And um, I, I'm older and sometimes it's harder for me to stay up. But these guys, like you, you know, like I'll go into, you know, practice or a shoot around the next day. And they put it behind them, right? And the inner, you know, that's the thing is like the energy around the group, right? It doesn't, it doesn't really come down. It's always up. Like they're excited to be in the gym. Um, They want to get better. You know, it's not like they walk in and they're sulking and, oh, here we go again. You know, we've lost eight in a row. Um, No, they're, you know, every game they come out, they really believe this is the one we're going to get this one. Right. And so, you know, again, I give the coaching staff um, all the credit for that because that's the environment um, that they've created. Um, And these young guys are, they're buying into it. So. So let's talk a little bit about some of the, the bright spots so far to start the season. I think the easiest place to start is the number one overall pick, Paolo Bancaro. Just speak a little bit, you know, what you've seen from him and, and, and what do you think, you know, we didn't know what his trajectory might look like coming into to start the season, but I think he's exceeded everyone's expectations. Yeah. Yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, you know, we knew we had something good, right? Like we watched him at Duke um, and, you know, he, I think the first thing that just kind of throws you and you guys have, have been there is his, just his size, right? Like when you're, when you're near him, it's like, my goodness, that's a big dude, right? Like he is huge. Uh, and so then you couple that and you start watching. So what, so what the NBA has given Paolo is space, right? Like the college game is so uh, packed in and there's really not a lot of room to operate and everything. The co- the pro game gives him space. So we can see him on the perimeter in an isolation and we see his ball handling ability. Um, and, you know, and, and just uh, the way he operates, you know, the way for a young guy, and this is what, you know, when we go and um, we listen to other coaches talk before the game, you know, they have their pregame availability and you listen to them, and what you hear to a man is um, just his his versatility, what he can do with the ball. And a lot of them marvel at his ability to get in the paint and draw fouls at such a young age. I think we had a uh, you know a graphic last night of you know rookies and the um, fouls per game that they were able to draw. I think you know of all time, he's a fifth on that list. You know with some pretty good player, you know, per game. I think he's almost nine times a game. He gets there. Um, usually that's something that you learn how to do. Um, and, but he's comes in with that. Now, it, 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 the great thing to me, the positive is, and this may sound contrary is like, he's not a finished product. Um, are there areas he's got to improve? Absolutely. I think he, you know, uh, there's, I think he's going to be a much better shooter. 
Um, you know, I, I think that's, you know, something he's, he's working a lot on. Um, I think he'll be a better, he's a good decision maker, but sometimes, um, because right now we depend on him so much. I think he forces things at times. Um, but I'd rather have a guy that feels that sense of, um, responsibility that I got to do this and I can do this, even if he's forcing something. Uh, I think that's a skill, right? That's something, you, you know, you come in. I talk a lot about uh, in the game, like uh, about a Cole Anthony. He's like a professional scorer, right? Like he, he's he got that mentality. That's a skill um, to be able to come in and do that. And I think Paolo has that as well. So um, all those things, I, you know, I just think he's, um, he's got such an upside and, um you know, I've talked to a lot of basketball people, you know, here early in the season as we go around the league and every one of them are like, wow, you know, that, that kid's got a chance to be really, really good. Like all-star multiple time, all-star. So, um, you know, maybe, you know, if he has a bad game every now and then let's not, you know, let's just remember this kid's got a huge upside and, and you look at him, and you got to remember, he's only 20 years old. He just turned 20, just which is crazy. 20. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other one that we'll talk about here as a bright spot, Jeff, is Franz Wagner. You yeah. can't bring up the magic and not talk about Franz Wagner. Someone that I personally, you know, am, am not sure, you know, long-term we talk about that guy is a, is a one on a championship level team or that guy's a two or whatever it might be. Right. I don't know where I've settled with Franz Wagner, <laughs> but uh, you, you know, I've, I, I think right now I maintain that he could be a two on a, on a really good team, maybe even a contender down the road. Right. He's also a guy that is obviously very young. Yeah. Can you just talk about Franz and his resiliency and his, you know, ability to overcome adversity like his hand yeah. right now that's always wrapped um whatever it may be it seems like this kid just doesn't stop yeah and it's like you know to your to your point is like what you said was you can't talk about the magic without talking about franz Wagner, right and i it irritates me that people do talk about the magic on the national scale Right. And don't talk about Franz Wagner. Um, we went up to Brooklyn and I was reading, you know, in the, you know, the New York papers. Right. They were talking about, you know, Paolo Bancaro. Of course, they're talking about Paolo. Right. He's the number one pick. He's our leading scorer. And they talked about his supporting cast and didn't mention Franz Wagner. Um, you know, the other night we were in Cleveland. And, you know, some of, you know, J.B. Bickerstaff was, you know, there's a ton of reporters and they were asking about Paolo. Da, da, da. They asked about Bowl. They never mentioned Franz Wagner. Um, and, and you think about the November guys that he's had. Think, think about what he's done. Um, 22 points a game over those 15 games in November without, you know, with and without uh, his teammates. He shot better than 53 percent. Uh, from the floor his you know he started off poorly three-point shooting I think he shot 39 percent during that 50 games got to the free throw line four assists four rebounds I mean I can go on if you take just uh just that those 15 games over a month that's a pretty good sample size isn't it that this is a pretty darn good basketball player um and it just kills me that um the national media doesn't recognize how good this kid really is. And he's just that, you know, he's just that he's young. He's 21. Um, so I'm, you know, like to me, like when Franz and Paolo together, right. Like, you know, I'm like, you like, I, to me, I think Franz can play anywhere. I see him as a three. I'd, I'd like to, you know, he could be a two. Um, I don't see him as the one on a, you know, I just think you need guard. Right. I don't think Franz didn't grow up uh, facilitating a team, you know, like a Mark Elfels. Right. Um, he's a off the ball slasher. And, you know, he he's developed the ability to put it on the floor and use screen and roll. That's great. Um, but he's with those guys that we're talking about playing alongside Paolo. Um, I don't see why in the world we won't have two 20 plus scorers together those two guys playing together for a long time i mean i think they'll be one of the 
you know, they continue on this path. They'll be one of the, you know, the top duos uh, in the Eastern Conference for years to come. You mentioned the other night on the broadcast talking to David, you know, that you think that Franz, like without a doubt, is going to be one of those guys that's like a multi-time all-star. For me, I've started to try to stop putting like a ceiling on what I think Franz can be because most of the month of October, what Luke and I talked about with Franz Wagner was how much he was struggling being the primary option, bringing the ball up, facilitating the offense. And then to your point in November, like he really just took it up like an entire other level coming out of the draft. We're like, Oh, this guy's going to be a a glue guy. He's going to, you know, play defense and, you know, he might develop as a shooter and he does a lot of things well, but he doesn't do anything exceptional. And now we're like, you look back, you know, that was 18 months ago. And we're like, man, we had no idea what we were talking about with this kid. So I've tried to, Stop putting a ceiling on, on Franz Wagner <laughs> because it seems like every time we do that, right. it really just exceeds your expectations and super excited about what he's going to become. Well, let me yeah. just just to follow up on that yeah. point and what and what Luke said too is like it's you know the, the thing about him is is like yeah he struggled right like we Jamal's asking him to do something he hadn't done but what he does is he figures it out. Yeah. You know, you, you talk about, you know, and again, he is playing. I mean, he's banged up. There's no doubt about it. Um, I was kidding with him uh, walking uh, down the hall the other day. I was like, how are you feeling? And he's like, oh, I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. I said, you're a liar. And he's <laughs> like, he just looked at me and I said, Franz, I said, I played the game. 20, 22 games in, everybody hurts. Right. And I said, you're not feeling great. I said, but what you're doing is great. And he just laughed and he was like, oh, you're right. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I mean, he just, you know, he's just like, I'm fine. I'm fine, which he is. Right. But he's just that he's a tough kid. Uh, He's very resilient. But the thing is, is like, was he struggling with what he was being asked to do at times? Yeah. But he figures it out. Right. He's that kind of player. And that's why I think, you know, you start, you surround him. If we get a full roster, uh, and you surround him with good players, he becomes a better player. That's just – that's why I think um, he'll be an all-star in our league because the coaches see it, right? Like whether the fans will vote him in or whatever, the coaches know what Franz brings. And so for that reason, I think um, he'll be there. You know, I think you can make the argument for both of our guys, Paolo and Franz, if the team had some more team success – yeah, I think you would have to start oh, yeah, putting absolutely. those guys into that conversation, but the numbers yeah. are already there, I think. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and, I, and I think that's why last year you had, because of the lack of success, you had people that, that for I, how it happened, I have no idea, but there were people that did not vote him first team all rookie. Uh, well, there was even one gentleman, to, yes, Dave McMenamin. Yes. Yep, we know him. We know <laughs> we, him. We oh, call yeah. him Dave McMenamin around here for putting in the minimum effort on I mean, uh, that ballot. But, like, you know, you should have your credentials taken away. Yes, you should <laughs> absolutely. Lose your voting right because it makes absolutely no sense. But to your point, more wins, right? Yeah, elevates. You know, elevates everybody. So um, everybody looks a little bit better on a winning team. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jeff, the last thing that I want to ask you in terms of a a highlight, but also shedding some light on where, how, just how important this guy is to the team. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr., the Magic are 0 and 9 this season without him. They don't have a win. So, like you said, the road only gets tougher this week. Wendell today was listed as out on the report, official injury report for, uh, for the upcoming game. Can you just talk about what you see? Like Jonathan said, you're closer than everybody else. So the players, the team, whatever it might be, what you see from Wendell, whether it be on the court or off the court, that makes it seem like he is a necessity for this Magic team to win some games. Well, I don't, you know, there, there's a lot there. Um, you know, just, I think you guys will probably remember, remember there was a stretch last year where uh, we were struggling And um, the guys came out and said, Wendell, you know, in the locker room at halftime, spoke up, you know, and they came out and I think we ended up winning the game or something. And every one of the guys talked about Wendell and that, you know, he doesn't always, but when he does speak up, he has the respect of his teammates, even at such a young age. And you earn that respect by what you do, uh, 
uh, you know, when, outside of the game, you know, like in practices, in the weight room, all those things, the work that you put in. So those are things Wendell's doing. Nobody, uh, you know, wants to play more than Wendell does right now. Unfortunately, um, I have some experience with what he's dealing with when I played. Um, the only way that really uh, that that plantar fascia or plantar fasciitis or you know plantar fascia tear or whatever he has, the only way. Think about a two hundred seventy pound man, and it's on the heel of his foot. The only way that gets better, that inflammation goes down, is rest, right? Um, and so. The unfortunate part is what he brings to the team. Uh, now, just get on the basketball side. If you dig into the numbers, right, and you and you think about uh, you know the way that the Magic play, right, we're a heavy screen and roll, uh, pick and roll, dribble handoff team. Um, if you look at Wendell. I think, you know, he still even registers, you know, he's losing uh, the games, I guess, and whether he qualifies for these rankings, but he's, I think, third in the league in screen assists, right? Setting the screen <laughs> that leads to a bucket. Um, that's a big part of what we do, you know, and we miss that from him. Um, he's terrific. You know, we're, our numbers in the paint are down. I mean, how many times does Wendell, you know, get a lob from Franz Wagner rolling to the rim or our best offensive rebounder, right? Like go back up in a crowd, get a ball and stick one back in. Um, and then not to mention the defensive side of the basketball. You know, when, when you're a team that is trying to switch, especially one through five, um, having a guy like Wendell who can switch on to – uh, you know, a Darius Garland or a Trey Young or whoever it is for just that, whatever it is, six, seven seconds at the end of the shot clock and hold your own. Um, that's huge, right? You miss that. That is a skill. You know, we've got some good bigs on our roster, right? Bobo, he's not, he can't do that right now, right? He just, he needs space and he, and he uses his height to discourage guys. But when you're talking about guys putting it on the floor, uh, and breaking your defense down, Wendell just he can do that, right? He can step in and move his feet for someone so big, um, and and get in front of people. So there are just so many little things that he does um, that we miss. Um, you know, he's I, I know you guys have heard me say this. He's a throwback, right? Like he is so fundamentally sound um, and does so many good things that really. A lot of things just don't show up in the box score. Um, and it's just, I think it's just, you know, guys are comfortable too with him on the floor. You know, he just, um, he covers for a lot of guys on the defensive end. Um, and he's not afraid to let you know, his teammates know too, if they mess up, right? Like, no, that's, you were supposed to be in this spot. Um, so we, you know, that's a, that's a part of him that's developing that I really like. So, I, you know, I think, it's essential for us to get him back. You know, if we're going to be successful, we really need him on the floor. Um, I, I just really like um, the way we play with um, with those three, with Wendell, Franz, and Paolo on the floor. I mean, you, we can play a three-man game on one side of the floor um, and just, you know, there's so much talent there, uh, so much basketball savvy that um, – it just, I think it makes it easier for everybody uh, when all three of them are out there. Well, you certainly win some more games with Wendell on the floor. I, we've got to say that. Well, you I know, think we, we would have We won. haven't won without think, him, so. I don't know about you guys, but I don't think we'd have lost, uh, you know, nine, you know, all nine of the games that he's, no. you know, he hasn't been on the floor. I mean, I think he no makes way. that big a deal for us. One of my favorite stats about Wendell, and, and you kind of talked about it, Jeff, is, uh, you know, the, the points in the paint that we've seen kind of a, the opponent's points in the paint, I would say that we've seen mm -hmm. kind of an increase over the last couple of weeks. Wendell isn't really known as like a, a shot blocker, but he's a rim protector in the sense that he's a, a paint deterrent. When he's down there, guys don't even want to challenge him at the rim. So definitely miss Wendell. And Jeff, the last question that we have for you here, in my mind, the way that this should work is when this guy finally comes back, we should all just be able to take a deep breath 
exhale, and then going forward, all of the injuries should be done. We should be done with this. You get one guy back, you lose another. When Jonathan Isaac finally comes back, to me, the way the universe works, that should mark the (laughs) end of the injuries for us for a very long time. We know it should be relatively soon, Jeff, but you know, you're in practice with these guys sometimes. What have you seen out of Jonathan Isaac recently, and, and what are you excited about bringing him back into the fold? Well, the, the one thing is that uh, I love about J.I. is he's always there, right? He's always around. Um, you know, a lot of times when guys are hurt, uh, while the practice is going on, they'll be off doing their, you know, their rehab and working on their thing. Jonathan's always on the floor with the guys, right? So he's, um, you know, he's he, in his mind, he's getting ready. Uh, you know, I think, you know, when he does come back, I, I don't know, you know, you missed two years of uh, yeah. basketball. I don't know on the floor what kind of impact he'll have right away. Um, but I know the, the bounce or the, you know, whatever you want to call it that we'll get just by having him in uniform um, will be huge. Um you know, he needs to get back out there for him, right? I, I mean, there's all kinds of, um, you know, I, I, you guys follow the league. Uh, T.J. Warren came back after, you know, same kind of – he'd been out since the bubble. I don't know if you guys – you guys remember in the bubble? Um, oh, bubble T.J. Warren, up. yeah. Uh, you remember. Yeah, right? And so how good he was, and you know, and then he tears the Achilles and, you know, he just um, – well, he finally played the other night, you know, and – uh, all of those guys on the Nets, particularly Kevin Durant, knew what he had gone through and everything, and it was a jolt for him, right? They got a little bounce out of that. So I think that'll be huge. Does it change our, you know, I'm with you. Once J.I. is back, well, let's just not have any more injuries, you know? Like, I'm tired of the Magic being number one on the player games missed or something yeah. like mm-hmm. that. We've, we've led that category way too many years i I, don't, I want us to you know kind of roll that one back down a little bit um but you know again it is exciting isn't it i mean when you look at who's on our roster and you start thinking about what this could look like if everybody were healthy right and the the different ways we could play like you know i mean could you play you know J.I., I mean, could you could you really have a 6-10 and over lineup for a stretch, right? Like, I'm not saying start it, do it the whole game, but could you run that out there and everything? Can you imagine that 3-2 zone, you know, with Jonathan Isaac at the top and, you know, Bobo and, you know, Wendell on the bottom? I mean, it would just be – it would just take up the whole court. Um, you know, those kind of things as a – you know, as, as someone who's coached basketball – that that those kind of things like excite me, like you know, and I'm excited for Jamal Mosley and his staff to have the you know find out you know what we can do with this instead of saying you know well if we had this guy and had this guy I just want us to be healthy so we really know because that's what's exciting um, when you you know you really start looking at it uh, man if you could grow this group together with what you have you know on the roster itself. Um, I think you've got something special. Let's end with this, Jeff, for, for the magic fans who like Luke said so perfectly, like it it looks really dark right now. What would you say to them to kind of lift their spirits right now? Just, you know, try not, I guess, you know, and, and, and this is hard, like, right. We're fans, right. But try not, um, try not to focus on, you know, each individual game, you know, look at it in, um, you know, like, well, I, I'll give you this, right? Like, this is as an example, Brian Hill, when he was coaching the Magic, you know, we were going through those great years with Shaq and everything to keep us as players from looking too far ahead and things like that. We only every uh, year he would he would break the season down into five game um five game increments right and you would look at it and typically in a five game you're going to have you had three home games and two road games um you know he would say all right we've got to take care of business at home right win the three and then you know we need to go three and five in that stretch right 
And then if you lose one, then you say, all right, well, we've got to get one of these road games. But it really helped us stay focused. So I think as a fan, a good thing to do is kind of look at the season, kind of break it down. Let's not get, you know, like, you know, focused on uh, what happened in the past or don't get too far ahead, right? Like, um, you know, don't, don't focus on what this might look like, whether we're in the lottery or anything like that. Don't start right? tankathon yet. Well, no, but think about it like, like this. Okay. So we've just gone through a really bad stretch, right? We've lost, we've had two really bad five game stretches. Okay. That's behind us. Look at it. Okay. Over these next five and they are, it's, it's a grind, right? Like, so think about this next five. So we've got all teams that we're going to be playing our, our playoff teams right now, better than 500. What do you think that should look like? What, you know, as a fan, what do you want to see against Milwaukee tomorrow? You know, like be, be a realistic, right? Like, um, a, you know, we're, we're, we want to win some, you know, obviously we want to get some wins, but look at it from that stand in this five game stretch with these guys coming in, um, you know, how, how, you know, what do you want to see? We talked about before, how does Paolo bounce back, right? Like, how is he improvement there? Is that improvement coming and everything and focus on those little things? Um, you know, are we starting to run more? Are you seeing us the pace pick up now that guys are starting to get used to playing with Markel? Um, is, you know, Cole coming off the bench? Does that give us is our bench scoring starting to improve a little bit? Is it, you know, is Cole becoming this catalyst, like, you know, whether he stays on the bench or not, like, are we thinking of him as this, you know, kind of a six man type, uh, you know, guy, like in a Jamal Crawford type guy, instant offense coming off the bench and kind of begin to look at, are you seeing improvement on those things? Um, because we, uh, again, I just wanted to, make sure everybody understands it's frustrating. I know hard for a young team to win, right? Are they competing every night? You know, we talked about the, you know, the one, the second Philadelphia game where they let go of the rope, right? Does we haven't seen it very often, maybe one time all last year. I think I remember a game where it just seemed like the guys, you could see the body language, right? They just, uh, the shoulders are drooping and they just, you know, were overmatched and, they stop fighting. That doesn't happen. Jamal doesn't let that happen. And just see, are we continuing to battle? You know, that's what every coach says. We know those guys are coming 48 minutes, right? They're not going to let up. So um, I think that would be it, right? Like it's, you know, we've dug ourselves a huge hole, right? Like at the beginning of the year, we were talking about uh, possible play-in. We're a long way from that right now. So we've got to focus on, um, these small, small battles. We want to win. There's no question about that. But let's not get focused on necessarily wins and losses. But let's see, are we improving? Are we getting better each game? We did that at the end of last year. Um, our defense got better. Our execution was better. Um, you know, our pace picked up. We didn't win a lot of games, but we saw that we were getting better and we're moving towards something. And I think. Um, you know, that's, you know, as a broadcaster, you know, and a fan of this team, that's, you know, that's kind of, that's what I have to focus on, right? Are, are we doing those things and, and seeing, trying to um, see those things? And I hope as people are watching, um, David and I are pointing those out and, you know, educating people on, you know, where these good things are happening, I hope. I definitely think so, Jeff. We appreciate you taking the time joining the show. We appreciate you and David getting these fans through these games, especially the blowouts, and you both do an incredible job. I hope you know how much fans appreciate you. And, again, we appreciate you joining the show again and, and taking the time, and we look forward to, to catching up with you in about you know 20-something games from now. The halfway pole this time. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, right. Jeff. Okay, guys. Thank you for having Thanks. me. Thanks. Absolutely. Awesome conversation with Jeff Turner, again, the color commentator for Bally Sports Florida. You can always hear him and, and, and watch those guys on the Bally Sports Florida broadcasts uh, for every Orlando Magic game throughout the season. Really appreciate Jeff joining. Um, yeah, we're, we were in much uh, darker spirits than we were uh, the first time that we talked to Jeff a few months ago to start the season, Luke. 
Um, but again, Jeff, always super generous with his time, very insightful, and we appreciate Jeff joining the show. Yeah, always uh, always a good time to talk with Jeff. Like you said, we will make sure to have these kind of 20-game type check-ins. I think we established that we'll probably talk with them halfway at the halfway mark here for the season. All right, Luke, before we go ahead and sign off here, Own four. let's take a look at the week ahead. Uh, the Magic schedule this week, Monday, they'll be at home to take on the Milwaukee Bucks. That game is going to tip off at 7 o'clock Eastern. Then on Wednesday, at home, you take on the Los Angeles Clippers. Again, that game is going to tip off at 7 o'clock. Then on Friday, you're looking to get a little bit of revenge versus the Toronto Raptors. That game also tips off at 7 o'clock. And you have like a mini Toronto home series here. On Sunday, you see the Raptors again at 6 o'clock. I'm really nervous about those two games because they just kicked our butt. Luke, what do you think the Magic do this week? 0-4. Yes, that's how I feel too. Yeah, I just it sucks I, I that just, we're at this point. It does. Uh, I feel very negative right now about the Magic. Hard not to. We we talked about it with Jeff, right? Like you asked him, what would you say to lift the spirits of Magic fans? Uh, at this point, man, like I'd I'd need someone to like give me a large sum of money to be like happy. You'd have to pay me to be optimistic about the Magic right now. It is it is very difficult. Like I touched on, you know, the Magic are 0 and 9 without Wendell Carter Jr. He posted on his Instagram. He shared someone's story the other day, and all he put was like "back soon" or something like that. Hopefully, that means like like soon is relative. So I don't know. Like like it's a long season. Soon for him could mean I'll be back in 10, 15 games. Soon could mean he's back this week. I don't know. And also, like JT touched on, injury he's got. This plantar fasciitis type thing. Um, it only heals with time. So I I don't know. If he's back this week, I uh, I would think the Magic can can maybe win one. Um, but just the, the team just seems, I don't know, man. Seem out of sorts right now. Seems like they're getting worse um, in their habits maybe and, and some other things. And just continuity, another thing Jeff touched on. I don't know, man, at all, you know, you're, and I said this a few weeks ago, Jonathan, I said, I'm just worried that when we get guys back, if we get them back in bulk, that the team is going to show some issues chemistry wise. And to which you said, things can't get much worse. I, things got worse. They, they've gotten worse. This team has gotten worse. So yeah. Oh, oh and four. To be fair, you've gotten guys back and then you lost other guys. You, when we you were having that guys. conversation, it's like we're going to get guys back and we're going to keep those other guys. I had in mind when those guys came back, we wouldn't see as much Admiral Schofield, Kevon yeah. Harris. You'd probably see less Caleb Houston, although I do love me some Caleb Houston. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but ideally, those guys wouldn't be playing the minutes that they're playing. We, we, need, to, we need to get healthy, but we also need to stay healthy. Right? Yeah, like we weren't planning on losing Gary Harris again and Jalen Suggs and, and Wendell Carter Jr. And as we talked about with Jeff, you know, the Magic are winless without Wendell Carter Jr. So if you don't get him back this week, I don't feel great about us potentially winning a game. And I'm just very candidly not seeing any signs this past week of this team being able to beat good teams. If you're mm-hmm. going to win a game this week, I think you've got to circle that game against the Los Angeles Clippers. Still no Kawhi Leonard, no Paul George, although they have been treading water as a team. They're not a bad team by any means. They are still a playoff team, even though they've been missing Kawhi basically the entire season. Paul George, you know, most of the last couple of weeks. But if you're going to get a win, it feels like it has to be that one. Or, I mean, are you going to lose to the Raptors three times in a row? I don't want to overestimate this Magic team. They certainly could lose to the Raptors three times in a row. But, you know, I still believe it at some point, Franz and Paolo are just good enough by themselves to go out and, and win you a game. And and maybe we'll see that this week. Maybe we won't. But if I was a betting man, which I am, I'm not going to bet on this, of course. <laughs> but I, I, I would probably say that we would go 0-4. However, Luke, in the case the Magic do pick up a victory, folks. Do not forget that every day following a Magic win, you can get 50% off your online order from Papa John's with code MAGICWIN. 
and don't think, oh, I don't live in Orlando. I, I can't use the code. As long as you're 150 miles from Orlando and further than 75 miles from Miami, you are eligible to use that code. So again, after every Magic Victory, the next day, 50% off your online order with Papa John's with code MAGICWIN. Hopefully we see the Magic win soon, but we have our doubts, and uh, I think for good reason, Luke. But I think that's going to do it for us. I really hope you guys uh, enjoyed our conversation with Jeff Turner. Again, I thought it was a lot of fun, and we're going to you know, we're looking forward to checking with him in checking in with him. My grief, my grief, my <laughs> goodness, I cannot speak. This is a perfect time to end this episode. My name's Jonathan Osborne. I'm an idiot for Luke <laughs> Sylvia. You guys have been listening to the Six Man Show. We will catch you guys next time. See ya. Thanks for listening to The Sixth Man Show. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and Spotify to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review. It helps out the show a lot. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sixth Man Show. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic!